We're going to start with a rectangle and we're going to drop two nodes in either side, so the left and right hand sides of the buttons. And the reason for this is you'll notice the, the main button, the brown area, is rounded, but the sides aren't exactly flat. So adding those two nodes in just allows you to get a slightly more sort of organic curve than you would if you just kept them completely flat. Sample in some colors. And I'm just gonna set up the, the main effect for the uh, 3D here. So a simple drop shadow, just offsetting that a little bit. And then we'll do it in a shadow. I'm just gonna offset that on the Y. And just gonna tighten up that blur. And as you can see, these two things have already given us yeah, a pretty close effect already, but there's still some minor bits and bobs that we need to do to really dial in that um, effect here. Just gonna do a inner shadow at the top. If you notice, if you look really closely, the darker brown area does carry on around the top. So if we, you know, really crunch these numbers here, maybe lower the blur a little bit, so it's a little bit tighter. It's gonna get us what we need. And if you look even closer to the reference image below, you'll notice that this wood effect actually has some stylized grain in there. So this is kind of fun to do. I'm just drawing out the, yeah, the grain effect with the pen tool here and I'm just going for three different levels and I'm going to leave one section uh, completely clear just so it allows you know that brown color just to come through and I'm just flipping these around so we've got some fills and I'm going to uh, uh, lower the contrast a little bit just so we can get a little bit more variation in the detailing and then I'll make a mask and I'm going to mask all of those shapes that we've just drawn. And maybe do a hard light or something over it. Yeah, plus dark is kind of cool. It's a little bit low, but I might um, increase it a little bit later on. Yeah, it's looking quite nice. And as you can see there, I just added a little bit of a layer blur just to sort of soften the join between them. Duplicating the base. I'm gonna work on this little lip. You can sort of see that there's a little highlight. And I just need to, um, yeah, try and capture that. So let's clean up these uh, effects a little bit, keep the inner shadow. I'm just gonna ramp that up. And as you can sort of see, we've got like that nice little edge highlight now. I'm just gonna dial it a little bit. You can spend a lot longer dialing these values if you want to, but I just wanna keep the uh, video as short as possible really for you, so you can get the general idea. But this effect's pretty close already. I'm going to work on the main button now. So this is like, it, it's quite simple to do, to be honest, but there's a few quirks, you know, depending on how we approach it. Like you could technically just like freehand it and just draw it uh, with the pen tool. But I've actually started with the rectangle here and I've created a few different nodes just to hold the, the flat sides of the shape whilst I apply the, uh, the radius. And we can get something uh, really close. And then we're just gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna spin it around, but yeah, there's a shortcut for it. So you wanna press Shift V or Shift H, depending on which axis you wanna flip it on, but I actually just quite like uh, duplicating it and then just spinning it around. It feels kind of cool to do it. It's probably not the most efficient way of doing it, but you know who cares really? Just do your own thing. 
And at this point, we're just because we duplicated them, I'm just adjusting the shapes just to get a little bit of a variation in the, the way in which they sort of pinch together and connect. I'm just going to sample the bottom gradient here. So adding a little drop shadow just as uh, just to add a little bit of separation between the the base button and the uh, the main lower part of the, uh, the button we're working on now. And as you can sort of see, I'm just duplicating it and I'm just shifting it into place. And it's really hard to work in Figma or any any sort of like tool that snaps uh, to pixels and or points from a distance. Um, you really do have to get in there, but I don't like to jump around too much for the videos. So, you know, zoom right in there and get that position in exactly how you want it. You know, take some time to get it right. You can see the, the artist who did this, you know, they didn't rush this button. They've, you know, made some, you know, real sort of like conscious choices and made, yeah, some really nice sort of organic looking shapes here. So it's just selecting these nodes and I'm just pushing them in a little bit just to try and get a little bit more variation in the shape. If we apply an inner shadow, that'll just give us a little edge highlight at the top. There we go. And it's these subtleties that really, you know, help things sort of push forward and sort of help sell that 3D effect. Yeah, it's looking cool. And if you look really close, there's like little parts of the, uh, the button where the light is really striking the corners. So yeah, just a simple ellipse or freehand it. Um, because if you freehand it, it's likely to look a little bit more sort of natural and organic than a squashed ellipse, which is what I'm doing now. And the same for the bottom down here. Just gonna drag that, get that into position. Just sampling the colors. Like really, it's really subtle, you know, and that's what we're sort of going for in this style. I was so surprised at on the surface it looks really simple but I've put quite a lot of effort into the detailing here. So what I'm doing now is um, just selecting a font. I selected this Mikado Bold demo one. Um, I couldn't find what the reference font was that they use in the game anywhere. Nothing came up. So this was the most playful one that I yeah, have in my head. And the text effect is just simply a stroke with a drop shadow effect. You know, it's becoming a bit of a, a consistent sort of pattern throughout all of my videos when we're breaking these buttons down. So um, yeah, it's straightforward enough for you at this point. I'm just refining things a little bit, just tidying up my hierarchy. And I'm gonna do a new colorway. So if you notice in the concept, it's just clipped off here, but um, there is a blue button as well. And I'm going to do this a manual way, but one of the cool things about Figma is they have a selection colors stack and that allows us to um, easily change the colors without drilling too deep down into individual objects. So yeah, let's take a look. So change the text, save progress. Nothing much changes here other than we'll just need to change the color of the stroke and the size of the text. And obviously the effect as well, we'll need a slight tweak just to match. Sampling the colors for speed. Now just working on sampling those colors for the, the main gradient of the button. Yeah, something like that. And few more colors that we need to fix for the back bits. This selection color stack is really helpful. You can see everything at root level, which is cool. Root level, top level. 
Yeah, that's it essentially, isn't it? Just sort of felt like I wanted to add a little bit of a blur to these uh, little dots. And I'll do the same for the one above. Just sort of softens them and helps them blend in a little bit without sort of standing out too, too much. So yeah, guys, that's uh, been a really quick video for us. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe and like and you know share with your friends.